In this video, I'm going to go over the financial statements. Financial statements are summarized financial reports of a business, and they're usually used for decision making. Typically, if you're using a software to do your accounting, you can produce some financial reports by just a few clicks of a button in that software. And it's worth mentioning that in order for your reports to be correct and accurate, your accounting data entry should be correct. If you're putting data into the system incorrectly, then obviously that's going to produce reports that are not correct. And some of the common reports that we're going to look at, first of all, the income statement, the balance sheet, the statement of owner's equity. These are the ones you're going to see throughout the lessons. And then I'm also going to mention the statement of cash flows, but this is something that's usually taught at a later point. Okay, so let's look at the income statement first. The income statement is a summary of the revenue and expenses during a time period. So you're going to take your revenue or income minus your expenses. And that's going to give you either a net income if it's a profit or a net loss if the business lost money. And then a couple other names for this are the profit and loss or a statement of earnings. Okay, and then this is what it might look like. The heading is going to be the name of the company, which statement you're doing and the date. In this case, we're looking at the year ended December 31st, 2023. So you're looking at the totals for the year. And you can see at the top, there's the revenue or income. And then here you have the expenses and a line for total expenses, which is just the total of these numbers. And then at the bottom, there is a line that says net income and losses in parentheses, just meaning that if this were a negative, you would have a net loss. If you were to take 55,000 and subtract the 29,100 in expenses, you would get net income or a profit of 25,900. And that's all there is to it. It's just revenue minus expenses. Now, as far as the formatting is concerned, if you learn this in a book with an instructor, you may or may not have to learn some of the formatting. So I'm just going to go ahead and briefly mention that in an accounting class, you might learn that the dollar sign goes on the top of the column and beside any final totals. If there's a number that consists of totaling up other numbers, like this total expenses number is the total of these numbers, then the numbers you're adding up would potentially go to the left in a column to the left. Not always. And then there's supposed to be a double underline under the final total, but my double underline didn't carry over. I copy pasted this from Excel and for some reason my double underline didn't carry over, but this is supposed to be a double underline right here under this net income. And then some books teach that you should have the expenses in the order of the largest to smallest. Now in practice, you're really not worrying about the formatting because the software is probably going to generate this report for you and you're probably not going to think about this. So this formatting stuff may not be relevant to you at all, but I just wanted to mention it in case it was. And then the next one is the statement of owner's equity. And this is just going to show changes in equity during a time period. And if it's a corporation, it would be statement of stockholders equity or shareholders equity. But then in many other businesses like a sole proprietorship or a partnership, it's simply statement of owner's equity. So we're going to do it from the perspective of owner's equity. And it might look like this. So this is going to be a statement of owner's equity for the year ended December 31st, 2023. You would start it with the beginning capital at the beginning of the year. Add any additional owner investments. Add net income. So this is from the income statement that I just showed you. You would carry that number forward to this statement and put that in here. If it was a net loss, 
you would be subtracting. So let me go back to that income statement so you can see. So here it is, the 25,900, and I simply carried it forward here. And then you could do a subtotal, but you don't have to, but this 40,900 is just a subtotal of these numbers. And then you would subtract any owner draws during the year, and that would give you the ending capital at the end of the year. And then if this were a statement of stockholders equity, it would be very similar in concept, but you would have accounts like common stock, paid in capital, dividends. Okay, let's look at the balance sheet. The balance sheet is going to basically show the accounting equation that we looked at in lesson two. Assets equals liabilities plus equity. And this one's a little different. We're not doing it for the whole time period. We're doing it as of a specific date. So it's like taking a picture of what they had on a specific day. So this is what it might look like. The date is a little different. This would either say as of December 31st, 2023, or I just put the date here. The assets would go on the left. Liabilities and equity would go on the right. And you would just make sure the totals equaled on both sides. And notice that this owner's equity is carried forward from the statement of owner's equity. So let me go back to that. You can see that it was 32,900 at the bottom and that number simply carried onto the balance sheet. In practice, your statement of owner's equity information might be in here on the balance sheet instead of having a separate owner's equity statement. And then lastly, there's a statement of cash flows. I didn't put an example on here because there's a couple different formats of statement of cash flows, and it's a fairly complicated report. So for now, we're just gonna look at what it is. And then at some point, I'll probably do a video on that. A statement of cash flows is gonna show the changes in cash during a time period, and it's divided into three sections. You have a section for operating activities, meaning operating your business. And then there's a section for investing and a section for financing. So like I said, we'll probably look at something like this at a later point. Now what I want to do is take the accounting equation example that I did in lesson two and show you how the financial statements would have looked for this example so that I can tie together lesson two with lesson three. So in lesson two, hopefully you watch that video, I went through the month of October and I showed how different transactions during the month would look in the accounting equation. And then I got the ending balances and I made sure the left side of the equation equaled the right side of the equation. So assets equal liabilities plus equity. So we had an owner investment at the beginning of the month, then they bought some office equipment, then they bought some office furniture on account, accounts payable, they had some receivables, they earned some revenue, they paid rent, the owner drew $1,000, and they made a payment towards the accounts payable. And then these were the ending balances. So let's look at those statements. I'm gonna put this on the screen kind of small. Hopefully you can see this well enough for me to show you the reports. First, you would have to do the income statement. You have to do these in order since information carries from one statement to the next. So you would have the income statement first, which the only thing on here that would affect the income statement would be the $5,000 in revenue and the $3,000 in rent expense. So this is what your income statement might look like. You would have 5,000 in revenue minus the 3,000 rent expense, and that would give you a $2,000 net income. And then next you would do the statement of owner's equity, which there was an owner investment right at the beginning of the month. There was an owner draw, 
And then of course we're going to use net income. So this is what the statement of owner's equity might look like. Now I put that they had zero capital, the owner had zero in capital at the beginning of the month or zero in equity because this was the first month that they started the business. And the reason why I say that is because there were zero balances before October. So whether you put the 25,000 owner investment on this line or on the owner investment line, it doesn't really make that much of a difference since the investment was right on the first day of the month. But I went ahead and put that there was a zero beginning balance and then the owner invested $25,000. Either way, they started out with $25,000. And then there was a $2,000 net income for the month, which was carried forward from the income statement. You don't really have to have this subtotal here, but you could. And then you would subtract the $1,000 that the owner withdrew and that would give you an ending capital balance of 26,000, which is reflected over here at the bottom of this spreadsheet. And that's it. That would be your statement of owner's equity. And then you would do your balance sheet. Now your balance sheet is gonna be a little different. You are looking at the ending balances of these accounts. You're not looking at the different, I mean, cash went from 25,000, to 22,500, to 19,500, to 18,500, then 14,500. Having the balances throughout the month doesn't really give you the information you need. You're really looking at what the balance was at the end of the month on the day, on the last day of the month. So the 14,500 would go on there as cash, 5,000 in receivables, 2,500 in office equipment, 10,000 in furniture. So those are the assets as of October 31st, and those add up to $32,000. For accounts payable, you're looking at the $6,000 balance at the end of the month, and that would go here. And then the capital balance, you could pull it from the statement of owner's equity, but it's also the same thing as this spreadsheet. 26,000. And when you take 6,000 plus 26,000, you get 32,000. So the balance sheet balances out. Um, so that's it. Hopefully that gave you an idea of how to do these reports. I do have, let me end this slideshow. I have this practice worksheet and I'm going to put this on my website so that you can practice manually preparing the reports on your own. I'm also going to post the answer key so you can check your work. So I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next lesson.